this Isaiah 28 15 simply states because you have said we have made a covenant with death and Shaw will have an agreement when the overwhelming whipping passes through it will not come to us for we have made lies our refuge and in falsehood we have taken shelter 18 then your covenant with death will be annulled and your agreement with Shaw will not stand when the overwhelming scourge passes through you will be beaten down by it Daniel 9 27 we're going to go over to there and again I'm reading from the ESV version Daniel 9 27 and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week and for ha half of the week he shall put an end to sacrifice and offer and on the and on the wing of abomination shall come one who make desolate until the decree end pour out on the desert herbs. Now, many of us plan a harsh game out here and we are playing with our souls. If we don't wake up right now and realize the time and the day and the hour we are living in, we are going to be totally lost. We are going to be uh, misguided. We're not going to have nowhere to turn if we make a covenant with the wrong person. Many of us make covenants with many different things, but this particular topic that I'm going to be speaking from is a covenant that is made by the Antichrist towards the nations. Making a covenant with death. That's my topic. That's my title. Making a covenant with death. Isaiah 28, 15 lets you know, because you have said, we have made our covenant with death, and Shaw, we have an agreement. So the rapture is on its way. Let's say 92% of the world is left behind and the other remaining percentage went in the rapture. What do you think is going to happen when hell starts to come down on them? Daniel 9, 27 clearly states that he said he's going to make a covenant, a strong covenant with many for one week after that one week it's going to be a half a week and then he's going to cease all sacrifice and offering so what am i saying what am i saying is it's going to be an abomination and it's going to be destiny oh mm -mm -mm. just in case y'all don't know what destiny really means i'm going to give you some I'm going to give you a couple of words on what it really means. Joyless. It is going to be sorrowful through separation and feeling alone. So if you read Revelation 13, it gives you a whole breakdown on what leads up to people being destined. It's because of the mark of the beast. And he had power to give life unto the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast be killed. Now on the flip side of that, if you do take that mark, if you are left behind, you take that mark, this is what this is saying. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in his right hand or in his forehead, right? So if that's the case, this is what you want to be feeling according to destiny in Daniel 9:27. It says you, it's going to be joyless. It's going to be sorrowful. It's like you're going to you want to feel that 
when you want to do your own thing, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind when you don't turn to him. So if you want to be a rejecter of Christ, by all means, that's your choice. I'm not encouraging it. I'm encouraging you to get Christ now. You got to understand, when you belong to Christ and all the stuff that's going to happen in this world, we are we won't be appointed to the wrath of God, but we will be saved from it. So if you want, if you want, if you don't want to be a part of that, the wise choice you can ever make in your life is choosing God, because God is the living water. He is the He is the bread of life. Jesus said, "I come to save them which are lost." But He also said this. He said, "Whosoever believeth in Me shall have everlasting life, and you will not perish." So back to Isaiah. Now Isaiah, in, in up in twenty eight fifteen, it goes on and say, "When the when the overwhelming wit passes through, it will not come to us, for we have made lies our refuge." So we lying, we we lying about various different things for various different reasons, and in the falsehood of it. We have taken shelter. Basically, what that saying is, in the understanding that I myself have got from it, we have taken shelter. We have taken shelter down into Shaw, meaning hell. Um, in the Greek, that's what Shaw means, but in the Hebrew, hell. Understand this: in the in all throughout the New Testament, in the Gospel, Jesus talked about hell so many times. So many times more than he talked about heaven. It's dangerous when we live the life that we want to live instead of living the life that God wants us to live. You want to make a covenant with the devil. I don't encourage it, but that will be your choice. When you do, you will regret it because Daniel already said that the Antichrist, which is a, probably among us right now, in in are going to the spirit of antichrist is among us we already know feel and see that and if you don't i advise you to get christ know christ and he will give you the understanding and everything that you need to know and feel we are going to make a covenant with him as he make it with us in as little as one week after that it will be a overspreading of abomination towards all nations and then again from the understanding that i receive it's going to start with the the nation of israel because the nation of israel is the key target when it comes to biblical prophets because the antichrist know that that is god that is the prominent land of god for the people see many times i have spoken about the mark of the beast 666 by you taking that mark again you will not be able to die however on the flip side of that if you don't take it then you will have to endure to the end and when you endure to the end by not taking and standing firm with jesus christ you will be saved according to the bible so it's going to be daniel the prophet spoke and he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week and for half of the week it's going to be a very short time he shall put an end to sacrifice and offer and run the wing of abomination shall come one who makes destiny mm -mm -mm. one who make destiny until the decree and is poured out on the desert you are the desert so let's not prepare ourselves for the abomination the spreading the overspreading of the abomination from the antichrist in which he's going to bring upon the people because again it's going to be joyless and sorrowful for you and it's going to be sad and overwhelming and you ain't going to know what to do and you going to be set up to take the mark according to revelation 13 he's already saying he's going to cause as many people to take this mark rich and poor free and bond it doesn't matter who you are the antichrist do not care about you he will not care about you god is the only way he sent his only begotten son to this world that we may have life through his son jesus christ and without the shedding of blood 
there's no forgiveness of sin. So we should be thanking God for sending his son to this world to die for our sins. Because if he had it, we would already be in hell. And my friend, hell is real. Just in case most people find this video and think that there is no hell and stuff like that. And y'all want to um, blaspheme against the video and think that whatever I'm talking about, I'm, it's not coming from the word of God. Or everything comes from the word of God. I, I don't add and I don't take anything away. Because the minute you start adding and taking away from the word of God, then you will be doomed for the fire. I guarantee you, because you now that you lead yourself into your own understanding. And from what I understand, the Bible say lead not unto your own understanding. And you can go back and you can read that for yourself in Proverbs. In fact, you can read the whole, the, the entire book of Proverbs because Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Because we all need that. We all need understanding. We all need God in general. That's just, that's just how it is. Now, I'm going to take you into the New Testament and point out something to you. Um, the book of Matthew. And let's go to, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter, I believe it's in 25. Matthew 25 verses 30. And this is, in, in, you can really go back and read, and if you don't, if you don't get this, it, I broke it down in a video, it's called Preparing for the Rapture. You could go back and you can look at that, anybody that's on Facebook, you could go on YouTube and you can find that video, Preparing for the Rapture, in this verse right here. I broke it all down and I gave it to you. This is plain and simple. Jesus gave it to the disciples. In, in Matthew 25, 30, it says, And cast out ye the unprofitable servants into out of darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you, diso when you disobey, and, and this is continuously I'm talking about, and, and not come to repentance. When you disobey God, and you don't want to do what God is instructing us to do or you don't want to and you just constantly rejecting or rejecting or you know, when somebody tell you about Jesus Christ you're like I don't want to hear that and that's reject that's a rejection of Jesus Christ and people and it's going to be many that do that because um he already said he already said anything that's not profitable um, to him so if you're not a profitable servant in the end as a rebellious individual you will be cast into the out of darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and he's talking about nothing but the, um, the lake of fire fire of brimstone in the book of um, Revelation it's, it speaks about the second death I don't want I don't want to see the one go through, go through that or even get left behind because it's his wrath is going to be poured out without mixture upon the wicked. And if you are upon the wicked, then you will be um, a part of that wrath because the people of God will be about here because we um, that serve God, that believe in the Son of God and believe that he rose and died, died for our sins and rose again. Guess what? We want to be about here. Because we are not pointed to the wrath of God, but we are saved from it. Now, um, Matthew 24, Matthew 24, verses 5, it, 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 it points out that in, in the last days, in the last days, what we are um, what we're living in right now is that Jesus warned us to take heed and let no man deceive us because it's going to be a lot of Christ out there. It's going to, he says in verse 5, he, in Matthew 24, he said, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That word many, that word many, it stands out a lot because if you go back over in the Isaiah of Dan Daniel 9.27, he shall make a strong covenant with many. That's the entire world. 
the entire world, including the ones that was left behind. But let me let me point out something else to you. Let's go over to Second Timothy because I need you to get this. Let's go over to Second Timothy. I really need you to get this. We're gonna go over to Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three. We're gonna start with the beginning of reading in verses one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now get this. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covenants, boasters, proud, blasphemer, disobedient to parent, unthankful, unholy, without natu natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontent, furious, despisers of those who are good, traitors, hideous, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof for such turn away this is it a lot is, is a lot is going to happen a lot is going to take place a lot have taken place and a lot is taking place but if you're not on the right side you are setting yourself up to go to hell and please stop saying that god sends us to hell god don't send us to hell it's our choices that we make send us to hell because god has given us the the freedom and the choice to make when it comes to the enemy in him. If you don't, and I'm gonna take you further deep into the book. If you don't get this and get it now, you will get caught up in every aspect of evilness. And it's all coming from the devil himself. Because you gotta understand, he is the instructor of this world. Let's go over to Revelation 16 and, and read one passage because I have something to explain to you. Revelation 16 verses 12, it says this. This is pretty much after the, after the rapture. And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great Euphrates, and the waters thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. I'm gonna tell you like this, when that when that happens and that they are drying up and the and the kings from the east, they might prepare. What is he talking about? Prepare for what? Talking about preparing for the war of Armageddon. The war of Armageddon because in the removal of the church, Christ come back for the church. In the end, he comes back with the church. So therefore if we're going to be coming back with Christ to war against Satan and his followers. It's pretty much straightforward right here. And all I have to say is not make a covenant with death because death will be your final destination. It's going to be a lot of stuff go on and you just want to be on the right side of Christ. It's, it's going to be horrible in the end because it's going, it's, it's going to be seven vows, um, vials of God wrath poured out and it's all going to be poured out without me and if you have time go back and read the book of Revelation just read the entire book to get the understanding on what I was talking about about the seven angels and the wrath of God you might want to start in chapter 15 of the book of Revelation and reread that chapter uh, 28 of Isaiah reread chapter 28 15 and 18 Isaiah and read Daniel. If you feel that you need to go from the beginning, go from the beginning and it will lead you just where you need to be. I want to end on this note with some good news, which is one of my favorite chapters in the book of Thess First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. It mentions here, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the of our angel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Come for one another with these words. This right here is referring to the rapture. And you want caught up, you want that rapture. That word rapture is not in the Bible, by the way. It simply means caught up, snatched away. If you want to get up out of here, you won't, don't want to be appointed to God's wrath, I just advise you to come, come on the side of God because this whole place is going to be demolished. It's going to be wiped out in the end with the seven judgment about that is going to be poured out.
because when when the trumpet blow when the, when that trumpet blow for the great private event which is the rapture that's the, that's Christ coming back for the church if you if you really want to gain understanding on that then I advise you to go back and um, a friend of mine is on one of my videos he will explain everything I don't have time in this video to give it to you but I will give you the chapter of what's going to happen you can read there on beginning in Revelation Revelation chapter 8 and it goes over to 9 and it, it just it just takes you in of each angel sounding the trumpet and what's going to happen but if you want to watch that video um go over and watch the daddy end of time um the first video part one daddy end of time part one and if you um if you have time after that or another day or whenever you find time i wouldn't wait forever so I'll go over and watch the video preparing for the rapture. Uh, those are up right now and that breaks everything down in that video. You will gain great value from all of them because I speak directly from the Bible or what the Bible says and I give a whole meaning of breakdown of what the Bible means in that sense. Just keep in mind that hell by Jesus Christ was spoken numerous times, numerous times. In the New Testament of the gospel so it's, it's basically it's warning us it's warning us ahead of time but when that time run out and that's called grace we have no more there is no they will it's gonna come a time where we ain't gonna be able to repent we ain't gonna be able to seek his face you got to seek him today don't forget to always pray about this situation don't even pray don't pray just because things going good and you like pray before things happen um, pray you even when things are bad because and thank God even when things are bad because he is the author and the finisher of our faith and you will know him is the gospel of Jesus Christ is um, is actually rewarding to want to know who God is my reward is everything that I do I do not of myself and my reward is in heaven and that's where I attend uh, attend to go so if you are if you are an unbeliever and you've never given Jesus Christ a try, my advisory to you is to seek him right now. Um, find a Bible truth speaking church, apostolic faith, and get in it. Stay with him. Understand that God sent his only begotten son and everything everything that you read in the Bible it basically it's going to lead, lead you right back to John 3 16 because it's always going to be so planted in you you want to be like oh my god you sent your son and you will always remember that to die for my sins you will always remember that even in your prayers while you pray thank you god for sending your son to die for my sins because again without the shedding of blood there can be no forgiveness of sin so um Stay away from the covenant of death, which is self, spirit of the Antichrist. Anything that has nothing to do with God, that is the, that's, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That is the um, covenant that you're making with death. And ultimately, we make a covenant with ourselves because we can make a covenant with our phones. We can be buried in this thing so much every day that we make it our God. We can be we can make the cup we can make a covenant with our cars, our houses, our kids, our spouses. We can make a covenant with everything that will lead us to our death. That will lead you to rejecting Christ because you would think it's all about you when it's not. Okay? Stay away from that. And just in case most people is tuning in and didn't catch this I am talking about making a covenant with death. I'm going to end this with this. Many times I've spoken about the mark of the beast. If you take that mark, your heart will be overwhelming, overwhelmingly uh, desolate, and you will feel very sad, alone, and without hope. You will not have hope. So I, again, I advise everyone who are listening to this message, repent and turn away from whatever you are doing and turn to Jesus Christ. Because we already read in 1 Timothy that 
it will be a turning away. A lot of people go to church and they don't have no idea that their hearts are so far from God. And this is why he speak in the book of Timothy about having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to end it here. I pray that you have got value out of this. And if you are listening on Facebook, subscribe to the channel, share the videos so somebody else could receive the message and the, and the goodness and the grace of God in their life that they too may be prepared for the coming of the Lord. Like this video and just share it with many, as many people. Don't be selfish because we all need God. And if we don't understand the times that we are living in, um, I also have a video for that too, and it's called The Mark of the Beast. And I have videos over there um, also for children. Um, and them too will need God at some point in their life, especially after the age of five. Everything, I'm going to leave everything down in the description, uh, including the website. You can go over there. You can put in a prayer request. You can join the groups. Um, it's for teens. It's for adults. The ancient for nothing. But let your petition be known unto God. And you can do that in that place. And I will definitely keep you in my prayers. Join the group. I will leave the links all in the description. I thank you all for tuning in. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a safe day. Keep God first.